why can't we remember Dad and Granddad fishing on Christmas Day? To them, it, if the sea was calm, you worked, because if the sea wasn't calm, you didn't work, you couldn't get an income. No, that's all right. Just wondering if this one might be the best one, Mike. I'll take that one, I think. I'd probably do a hungry once a fortnight, just for the family and just to give myself, I love the things, I just can't leave them alone, so that's why hence my figure. <laughs> My name is Ronald McDonald. Everyone knows me as Butch. Um, I've lived in Kaikoura for 61 years and um, raised by a grandmother and my natural mother. Uh, we're of uh, Naitahu Ngāti Mutanga descent. We have links into Ōnaku, Little River, into Mangamanu through the Raupatas. And uh, yes, we, we have pretty much links all over the South Island into Naitahu. Yeah, it's a wee baby trout. He's only a little fella. There he goes. Ko Gina Solomon O, um, ko Takahanga te Marae, ko Tapuanuku te Maunga, ko Awaro te Awa, uh, ko Natikuri te Hapu. My dad made his pots, so and I used to go and collect cane with him, so it was quite a good buzz as a kid. You'd, he'd go out in the bush and whatever landowner he knew, we'd go out and he'd go out and get his cane, and I'd just sort of go along for the ride. This would have been how the original Maori made their pot out of supplejack. But what they used to do is they used to run the supplejack that way, and and then they would bind it with flax, and the same way as they made their uh, hinaki for the tuna as well. Around at uh, the Hamiri Bluffs at Oaro, we used to go around there and we'd take a, a lady's stocking and we'd put power in it, we'd tie them to a piece of binder twine, we'd just leave them in the rock pools and when you saw, you'd tie them to a piece of bull kelp, when you see the bull kelp moving, you'd go in there and you'd pull out the most massive craze and we had um, kerosene cans sitting on the beach, fire going under them, craze, we just, you know, cooked them straight up there and and the other ones as a specialty went in the poha, so yeah, it was... I'd be five or six years old, I'd imagine, when I was doing that with her. But no, it was a magic place to grow up. I can remember lots of crayfish, and then I think there was a wee bit of a slump. But I think the quota manage management system was probably quite good for crayfish. You know, I think the work that we've done with Te Kurawai, we needed to do things because we couldn't keep fishing all of the users, whether it be commercial, recreation, iwi, the charter fishing. I don't think we could sustainably continue fishing unless we did something. In our strategy, um, some of the things that we've got is we've got Ma Tai Tai, we have Tai Puri, we've got a Rahui, and the Marine Reserve. So it was a combination of different tools that we thought would be some of the solutions to some of the problems in our coastal area. And some of the feedback that we've had from the divers who have been in there, we're hearing really great things about what's rejuvenating in the Rahui, and the Coda in particular. The stocks are really looking well. Kaikoura, I think, because we've got the big deep trench, we have a lot of cold currents coming up. That's why we've got such a healthy fishery. 
and um, the crays here are, are pretty healthy, yeah. yeah th this one here, he's lived in Kaikoura probably since he gave up marching. He's probably marched into Kaikoura, thought this is the place I want to live, like we did, and um, he stayed territorial. And the reason being is he's grown these pigments into his shell, like he's so dark and maroon, whereas on the other hand, this other cray here, see how these are more yellowy? These are a very yellowy crayfish. They're, they're March crays. So that they're actually just arriving. So they've been on the march around the country. They're a pretty formidable beast in the water. Holding it here like this, I'm quite safe. But when you're fighting it off a rock, you know, they, everything's a weapon. Which a lot of people will, um, they'll eat just the tail of the cora. Maori, or most Maori, prefer the body. It's more tasty, there's more flesh in there. A lot of European people look at it and they think, oh, it's, it's mucky looking. But it's, it's your taste if you're eating with your eyes or your taste buds. Uh, but they are beautiful eating. But pricey though, Very, you know, a bit overpriced for what you've got to pay. You know, like a cray like that wouldn't be worth one that's half its size because it's too heavy, it's too dear to sell. So a smaller cray will sell better, but you can pay up to 80 or 90 dollars for just one crayfish. It's, it's so expensive. That's why Maori hope they never lose the right to catch it because, well, it is, it's our kai, you know. What we do is we take the cora and just as a humane thing, we just give him a just a nicky in there. It seems cruel, but it's more humane than actually cooking them alive. You know, a lot of people boil them alive, which I don't like doing. When I was a kid, um, my grandmother, she was born on Pitt Island. She used to take us down the beach when I was a little fella like Matai, you know, a little kid, and we'd sit down there and she'd fill these kelp bags up with cockles and mussels and the cora, power, everything, you know, and just cook it on a, in a hot bed on the beach, like a hungy. I'll have to wrap them, I think that's just the... <laughs> yeah, it's just not cutting, so... And then we'll try and put these down. Cook it. Um, well, that's a, a, about a 60-pound wild, wild pig that we got, and a wee bit of mutton, kumara, pumpkin, carrots, uh, onions, and potatoes which is a pretty basic menu for it, you know. We, we cook that pretty much all the time. Coomera's my favourite, I love Coomera and, and the meat. I'm an amateur fisherman now, 61 years of age. The knees and the elbows and things have let me know all the years I was in the water that they exist, <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. So, um, yeah, I love going out there and just catching it now for, for food, yeah. I send my boy out, Morgan, he goes and gets it. He's a wee bit more capable than I am now, so, yeah. But uh, the mind's willing, the just body owls you a wee bit. <laughs> you can smell it, some heat in there. Oh, yeah, she's all cooked. Ooh. She's hot. It's pretty hot. It, it is lovely. I do enjoy it. I mean, it's, um, you can cook anything, you know, and everything together, so that's what's lovely about it. This is um, cabbages. We do these whole. See, they just cook, they just mush. That's a sheep shank, they're beautiful. Well, that looks nice, Peck. It's Tangaroa's garden, it's there. It's got to be protected, but if you utilise it wisely, it'll be there tomorrow and the next day. You know, you rape and pillage it, it'll become the Serengeti. It's, it's a desert. Mm. 
You love your crayfish, don't you? Yeah. Good morning.